A girl is humiliated at a party for being the daughter of a maid, but when they realized who her grandfather was, everyone trembled. The sound of Alice's heels echoed across the marble floor of the Blackwood Mansion. She firmly held the hand of her 16-year-old daughter Emma as they were escorted out of the luxurious ballroom. The disdainful looks and whispers of the guests followed them like unwanted shadows. Just a few hours earlier, Alice was adjusting Emma's uniform in their small apartment. I'm sorry, dear, I know you didn't want to come, Alice said, stroking her daughter's hair. But I need your help today. The work is too much for me to handle alone. Emma smiled, trying to hide her disappointment. It's okay, Mom. I understand. Back in the present, Alice's heart broke seeing her daughter humiliated in front of hundreds of wealthy and powerful people. It all started when Emma, captivated by the glitz and glamour of Olivia Blackwood's debutante ball, stepped out of the kitchen where she was helping and mingled with the guests. For a few magical moments, Emma felt part of that dazzling world. Her eyes sparkled as she observed the elegant dresses and glittering jewelry. But her happiness was short-lived. Olivia Blackwood, the birthday girl, recognized Emma instantly. With a malicious smile, she approached. Well, well, if it isn't the cleaner's daughter, Olivia said loudly, drawing everyone's attention. What do you think you're doing here, dressed like that? Emma's face turned red with shame. She looked around, searching for an exit but was surrounded by curious and laughing faces. Olivia continued mercilessly, Did you know this girl is a maid's daughter? She's probably never seen so much food in her life. Laughter echoed through the hall. Emma felt tears forming in her eyes. Alice, hearing the commotion, rushed to defend her daughter, but it was too late. Understood. I'll expand the dialogue between Victoria and Alice, increasing the level of humiliation. Here's the revised version of that part of the chapter. Victoria Blackwood, the family matriarch, arrived like a hurricane. Her face twisted with anger. Alice, how dare you bring your daughter to my Olivia's ball, she shouted, her voice echoing through the now silent hall. Alice tried to explain, her voice trembling. Mrs. Blackwood, please, I just needed help with the work today. We didn't intend to. Silence. Victoria interrupted, her eyes sparking with fury. Did you really think you could mix your daughter with the decent people here? Look at her. Victoria pointed at Emma, who shrank under the cruel gaze. Dressed like a little maid, trying to pass as one of us. It's pathetic. Alice stepped forward, trying to protect Emma. Please, Mrs. Blackwood, Emma hasn't done anything wrong. She was just. Just what? Trying to steal? Looking for a way to take advantage of us? Victoria laughed, a cold and humorless sound. You two are the same, always wanting more than you deserve. Tears began streaming down Alice's face. That's not true. We just... Enough. Victoria shouted. You're fired, Alice. Fired. And don't think you'll get a penny more. In fact, you should thank me for not calling the police for trespassing. The guests around whispered and pointed, some openly laughing at Alice and Emma's humiliation. Victoria turned to the guards. Get these two out of here immediately. And make sure they never set foot on this property again. Alice, desperate, made one last plea. Please, Mrs. Blackwood, this job is all we have. How will I support my daughter? Victoria looked at Alice with disdain. That's not my problem. Maybe you should have thought about that before trying to take advantage of our kindness. Now, get out of my sight before I change my mind about calling the police. At that moment, Edward Blackwood, the family patriarch, appeared. His eyes met Emma's for a brief second, and something passed between them. But then he averted his gaze. Edward, Alice pleaded, please say something. You know the truth about Emma. Silence fell over the hall. All eyes turned to Edward. He hesitated for a moment, then spoke coldly, I have no idea what you're talking about, Alice. I've never had anything to do with you or your daughter. Now, please leave. Emma's heart shattered at these words. Tears now freely flowed down her face. Alice, defeated, took her daughter's hand. 
Come on, Emma. There's nothing left for us here. As they were escorted out, Alice could hear the whispers and giggles of the guests. What a shame, someone murmured. How dare she make up such lies, said another. As Alice and Emma made their way to the exit, silent tears streaming down their faces, a murmur arose among the guests. The crowd parted, revealing a tall and imposing man entering the hall. It was Charles Thornton, the most influential tycoon on the West Coast. Charles looked around, his gaze settling on Alice and Emma. He walked purposefully toward them, ignoring the whispers and curious glances. Stop everything! Charles's voice echoed through the hall. These two ladies are going nowhere. Victoria Blackwood, still red with anger, turned to Charles. Mr. Thornton, with all due respect, this is a private matter. These people were leaving. Charles smiled, but his eyes remained serious. I'm afraid I cannot allow that, Victoria. You see, Alice is not just your former employee. She is my daughter. A stunned silence fell over the hall. Alice looked at Charles, confused and shocked. What? That, that can't be true. Charles approached Alice, his eyes filled with emotion. It's true, Alice. I am your father. He began to tell a story that left everyone aghast. Many years ago, in San Francisco, I had a romance with a young woman named Sarah. We were young and in love, but my family disapproved. They sent me abroad before I knew Sarah was pregnant. Charles continued, his voice laden with regret. When I returned years later, I discovered that Sarah had run away. I spent decades searching for you too, hiring detectives, scouring records. A few months ago, I finally discovered that Sarah had moved here with you, Alice. He looked around the hall. I moved to this town hoping to find you. I befriended several local families, including the Blackwoods, but I had never come to the mansion before. Today, when I arrived and saw you, Alice, I recognized you immediately from the photo my detective had obtained. Alice, still dazed, managed to speak. But, why did you never seek me out directly? Charles sighed. I wanted to, Alice. But I feared that a direct approach might scare you. I planned to find a way to gradually get closer. I never imagined our first meeting would be like this. Victoria, recovering from the shock, tried to intervene. Mr. Thornton, this is extraordinary. But surely we can discuss this at a more appropriate time? Charles ignored her, focusing on Alice and Emma. I would like you to come with me. We have a lot to talk about and, if you allow me, I want to offer my support and protection. Alice, still processing everything, looked at Emma, then at Charles. Years of struggle flashed through her mind. Finally, she nodded slowly. I think, yes, we can talk. Charles smiled, relieved. He offered his arm to Alice and extended his hand to Emma. Let's go, then. My car is waiting. As they left, Charles cast a firm glance at the Blackwoods. As for you, we will have a long discussion about how you treat your employees. Expect to hear from me. Alice and Emma followed Charles, leaving behind a sea of shocked faces. As they entered the limousine, Alice felt a mix of fear and hope. Emma squeezed her mother's hand, offering silent comfort. Together, they embarked on an uncertain journey, leaving behind the world they knew and entering a new chapter in their lives, filled with possibilities and unanswered questions. Alice woke up startled, disoriented by the softness of the silk sheets and the spaciousness of the luxurious room. For a moment, she thought she was dreaming. But reality soon hit her, she was in the mansion of Charles Thornton, her newly discovered father. As she prepared for breakfast, Alice couldn't help but recall her previous life. Flashbacks of sleepless nights, working two jobs to pay the rent, flooded her mind. She remembered the time she had to choose between buying food or medicine for Emma, the silent tears she shed as her daughter slept, not knowing how they would face the next day. Downstairs, Emma timidly explored the enormous kitchen, amazed at the abundance of food. Her stomach growled, reminding her of the many times she went to school hungry. Now, before her, there was more food than she had ever imagined. Charles entered the kitchen, smiling warmly. Good morning, Emma. 
I hope you slept well. Please, help yourself. Emma nodded, still uncomfortable. Thank you, Mr. Thornton. Please, call me Charles. Or, well, maybe one day, Grandpa, he said, with a hint of hope in his voice. The comment made him a freeze. Grandpa. The word seemed strange, almost wrong. For years, her identity was based on being just her and her mother against the world. Now, suddenly, she had a rich and powerful grandfather. Who was she now? Meanwhile, in his office, Charles made discreet calls. Yes, I want a complete investigation into the Blackwoods' affairs. Every detail, every transaction. If there's anything out of place, I want to know. The first findings came in quickly. Records of suspicious payments, mistreated employees, possible tax evasion. Charles frowned, making notes. The Blackwoods were not what they seemed. In town, the news of Charles's revelation spread like wildfire. In cafes, beauty salons, and offices, it was the only topic. Did you hear? The cleaner Alice is actually Charles Thornton's daughter. Impossible. It must be some kind of scam. I always thought she had an air of nobility. I bet the Blackwoods are furious. Serves them right. Reactions varied. Some expressed joy at Alice and Emma's fortune. Others, envy and resentment. Why them? What did they do to deserve this? There were also those who looked on suspiciously, suspecting some scheme or lie. For Alice, navigating this new world was a daily challenge. One afternoon, while walking through the mansion's garden, she was approached by a neighbor. Alice, dear. What a wonderful surprise to discover your true identity. We must have tea one of these days. Alice hesitated. This same woman had treated her with disdain weeks ago when she saw her getting off a bus. Thank you, she replied politely, I'll check my schedule. Returning to the house, Alice looked at herself in the hall mirror. Who was this woman looking back at her? Was she still the same Alice who fought and sacrificed everything for her daughter? Or was she becoming someone else? The dilemma consumed her. How to balance her new life with who she had always been? How to protect Emma from the pitfalls of this new world of wealth and privilege? Charles, noticing her unease, approached her. Is everything okay, Alice? She sighed deeply. It's just, all of this. It's too much sometimes. I don't know how to act, what to say. Charles placed a comforting hand on her shoulder. Just be yourself, Alice. It's that strong and dedicated woman I want to get to know. You don't need to change for anyone. Charles's words brought a small smile to Alice's lips. Perhaps, with time and patience, she could find her place in this new world. For now, her focus remained the same as it always was, to protect and love her daughter, no matter what happened. As the sun set over the Thornton mansion, Alice, Emma, and Charles sat down to dinner together. It was a new beginning for all of them, filled with promises and challenges. The world they knew had been turned upside down, but together, they would face whatever came their way. The sun had barely risen when Alice received a mysterious message on her cell phone. Meet me at the park at 7 a.m. Urgent matter. Edward. Her heart raced. What could Edward Blackwood possibly want? With caution, Alice went to the meeting. Edward was there, looking nervous and downtrodden. Alice, we need to talk, he began, glancing around to ensure they were alone. I have a proposal for you. Alice crossed her arms, suspicious. What kind of proposal? Edward took a deep breath. Ten million dollars. For you and Emma to leave town. Start a new life far from here. Shock coursed through Alice's body. What? Are you bribing me? Think of it as an opportunity, Edward insisted. You and Emma can have a comfortable life away from all this drama. Alice felt a mix of anger and temptation. Ten million dollars could change their lives forever. But at what cost? Why are you doing this, Edward? She asked, her voice trembling. He looked away. There are things you don't understand, Alice. It's better for everyone if you just disappear. 
Alice left the park with her head spinning. The money could secure Emma's future, provide them with security they never had. But accepting it would mean giving up on the truth, the justice she had always longed for. Returning home, Alice found Emma waiting for her. Where were you, Mom? Concern was evident in her eyes. I just went for a walk, Alice lied, feeling guilty immediately. Emma frowned. Mom, I saw the message on your cell phone. Did you meet with Edward Blackwood? Alice's blood ran cold. Emma, I can explain. Explain what? That you're considering his offer? Emma shouted, tears in her eyes. How can you think about accepting money from him after everything we've been through? The ensuing argument was intense. Alice tried to explain her dilemma, but Emma felt betrayed. The friction between mother and daughter created a tension that had never existed before. Meanwhile, Charles noticed changes in Alice's behavior. She seemed distant, worried. Suspecting something was amiss, he discreetly increased security around the mansion and hired a bodyguard to accompany Alice and Emma. On the other side of town, Victoria Blackwood was plotting her revenge. In a secret meeting with investors, she sowed seeds of doubt about Charles's business integrity. Who knows what other secrets he hides, she insinuated, smiling maliciously. Tormented by Edward's offer, Alice began to delve into her own past. She revisited old photos, forgotten diaries, seeking clues about her relationship with Edward. The memories that resurfaced were confusing and painful, raising more questions than answers. As days passed, the tension between Alice and Charles grew. Charles, sensing something was wrong, pressed for answers. Alice, what's going on? He asked one evening, his voice a mix of concern and frustration. I can see something's bothering you. Alice hesitated, torn between telling the truth and protecting her father from a potential scandal. It's complicated, Charles. I'm just trying to understand my place in all this. Charles frowned. The Blackwoods approached you, didn't they? Alice, you need to tell me. We're in this together. The ensuing discussion was heated. Alice advocated for dealing with the Blackwoods discreetly, while Charles insisted on a more direct and legal approach. They need to be held accountable for their actions, Alice, Charles argued. We can't let them get away with this. Alice countered, frustrated. You don't understand. It's not that simple. The impasse left both father and daughter exhausted and worried. Alice found herself caught between two worlds, struggling to find the right path. That night, lying in her bed, Alice contemplated her options. Edward's offer weighed on her mind, as did Charles's determination to seek justice. In the midst of it all was Emma, whose trust she feared she had shaken. Alice knew a decision had to be made. But which was the right one? Accept the money and start anew? Or confront the past and fight for the truth, no matter the consequences? With the weight of the world on her shoulders, Alice fell asleep, knowing dawn would bring with it the need to make a choice that would forever change their lives. Emma wandered aimlessly through the city streets, her mind a whirlwind of emotions. The argument with her mother about Edward Blackwood's proposal still echoed in her ears. She felt betrayed, confused, and above all, lost in a world she no longer recognized. As she roamed through a neighborhood she had never visited before, Emma noticed a modest building with a worn sign, Hope Shelter, Support for Youth. Curious and seeking a distraction, she decided to enter. The interior was welcoming, though clearly in need of repairs. Young people of various ages were scattered around the common room, some studying, others conversing softly. An elderly lady approached Emma with a gentle smile. Hello, dear. Can I help you? Emma hesitated. I... I'm not sure. I was just passing by. Well, you're welcome to stay a while if you'd like, the lady offered. I'm Mrs. Martinez, the shelter's administrator. As Emma observed the surroundings, a young man with dark hair and bright eyes approached, carrying an old guitar. Hey, are you new here? I'm Lucas. Emma, she responded, noticing Lucas's talent as he strummed a few notes on the guitar. You play really well. Lucas smiled, but there was a shadow of sadness in his eyes. Thank you. 
I've always dreamed of studying music, but, well, things don't always work out as we plan, do they? Lucas's words triggered a wave of memories in Emma. She remembered the nights her mother would come home late from work, exhausted, yet still finding the energy to help her with homework. She recalled the lean Christmases when a single gift was a cause for great joy. The hunger, the cold, the secondhand clothes all came back to her with painful clarity. In the days that followed, Emma began to visit the shelter regularly. She volunteered to help with tutoring, finding unexpected satisfaction in sharing her knowledge. Lucas became a close friend, and together they organized small music recitals to cheer up the other youth. At home, Alice noticed Emma's frequent absences and grew concerned. Where have you been, Emma? She asked one evening, her voice a mix of worry and frustration. At the shelter, Emma replied, her eyes shining with an enthusiasm Alice hadn't seen in weeks. Mom, you have no idea the incredible work they do there. Those young people, they need so much help. Alice sighed, feeling torn. Emma, I understand you want to help, but we can't forget our new reality. You have responsibilities now, expectations to meet. The comment ignited a spark of anger in Emma. What expectations? To be a little rich princess and forget where we came from? Mom, I thought you, of all people, would understand the importance of helping those in need. The conflict between mother and daughter intensified in the following days. Alice, concerned about Emma's future and the complications of her new social position, tried to limit her daughter's involvement with the shelter. Emma, on the other hand, felt that she had finally found a purpose, a connection to her roots. At the shelter, Emma delved deeper into the stories of the youth she met. She heard about families torn apart, dreams interrupted by poverty, and the daily struggle for survival. Lucas shared how he lost his parents in an accident and ended up on the streets before finding Hope Shelter. You know, Emma, Lucas said one day as they organized donations, before you came, I had almost given up on my dream of being a musician. But seeing you here, helping us even though your life is so different now, it gave me hope again. Lucas's words deeply moved Emma. She realized that her presence at the shelter was not just about helping others, but also about reconnecting with who she truly was. That night, as Emma returned to the Thornton mansion, she found her mother waiting for her. Alice's look was a mix of concern and resignation. Emma, we need to talk about the shelter and your future, Alice began. Emma took a deep breath, preparing for another confrontation. But this time, she was determined to make her mother understand. The shelter wasn't just a hobby or a rebellious phase. It was a part of her, a connection to her roots that she refused to abandon, no matter how much her life had changed. With a racing heart, Emma began to explain to her mother why Hope's shelter meant so much to her, hoping Alice could see beyond her concerns and understand the importance of this new purpose in her life. Charles Thornton sat in his office, surrounded by stacks of documents and reports. Weeks of intense investigation were finally bearing fruit. His eyes scanned the pages, revealing a disturbing pattern of corruption and deceit. My God, he murmured, running his hand through his graying hair. It's worse than I imagined. The findings were shocking, falsified tax records, elaborate schemes to evade millions, and most disturbingly, evidence of systematic exploitation of immigrant workers. The Blackwoods had built an empire on a foundation of lies and suffering. Meanwhile, Alice grappled with her own moral dilemma. Seated in the mansion's garden, she held an old photo of Edward Blackwood. His words echoed in her mind, there are things you don't understand, Alice. She wondered whether she should tell Charles about Edward's proposal. Her loyalty to her newly discovered father conflicted with her instinct to protect Emma from further scandal. Across town, Victoria Blackwood plotted her revenge. At a secret meeting with influential investors, she sowed seeds of doubt about Charles's integrity. Think about it, gentlemen, she said, her smile as cold as ice. A man who has hidden a daughter for decades, what other secrets might he be keeping? Can we really trust him to lead our investments? The city began to divide. Rumors and speculation ran rampant. Some defended the Blackwoods, citing their philanthropic contributions and long history in the community. Others supported Charles, seeing him as a champion of justice and truth. 
Emma, largely oblivious to much of this drama, immersed herself further in her work at Hope Shelter. There, among the youths who struggled daily for a better future, she found peace and purpose. Hey, Emma, called Lucas as she entered the shelter. We have a new girl today. I think you can help her with math. Emma smiled, grateful for the distraction from the tensions at home. Sure, I'll meet her now. As Emma dedicated herself to the youths at the shelter, Alice made a disturbing discovery. Rummaging through an old box of keepsakes, she found a letter yellowed with time. It was from Edward, dated 17 years ago. With trembling hands, Alice read, My dear Alice, I know what we had was brief, but you need to know the truth. Victoria found out about us. She threatened to destroy you and the child if I didn't end everything. Forgive me for my cowardice. I hope one day you will understand. Always yours, Edward. Alice let the letter fall, shocked. All her memories, all her doubts about her past with Edward, suddenly took on new meaning. Victoria knew. She had always known. That night, Charles called Alice and Emma to a family meeting. His face was grave as they entered his office. I've found enough evidence to expose the Blackwoods, he said, his voice steady. I'm going public at the press conference tomorrow. Alice felt a knot in her stomach. Charles, wait. There's something you need to know first. As Alice prepared to reveal the truth about Edward's letter and the recent proposal, Emma looked from one to the other, feeling the weight of the impending revelations. Charles, sensing Alice's hesitation, frowned. What's going on, Alice? What aren't you telling me? The air in the office grew heavy with unrevealed secrets and painful truths about to come to light. Alice knew her next words could change everything, for better or worse. With a deep breath, she began, Charles, Edward reached out to me recently. He made an offer. Alice's words hung in the air, poised to trigger a new wave of revelations that threatened to shake the foundations of everything they thought they knew. The web of lies entangling the Thornton and Blackwood families was about to unravel, with consequences no one could predict. The sun had barely risen when Victoria Blackwood set her plan into motion. With a cold smile, she sent an email to dozens of important investors, revealing confidential information about alleged fraudulent practices at Charles Thornton's companies. The impact was immediate. Charles's company stocks plummeted. Phones rang incessantly at his offices, investors demanding explanations, partners threatening to break contracts. Caught off guard, Charles struggled to contain the damage. This is ridiculous, he shouted over the phone. These accusations are completely unfounded. But the damage was done. Within hours, rumors of massive layoffs began to circulate. Hundreds of employees feared for their jobs, entire families on the brink of despair. Alice, heading out to shop, accidentally overheard a conversation between two executives from Charles's company at a cafe. It's a disaster, one of them said, looking defeated. If this continues, we'll have to shut down several factories. Alice's heart sank. She knew she had information that could discredit Victoria and save Charles's reputation. But using this information would mean exposing painful secrets from her own past and potentially destroying the Blackwood family. Meanwhile, at school, Emma faced her own battles. What were once curious glances had now turned into malicious comments and deliberate exclusion. Look, the fake princess taunted a girl as Emma walked down the hall. Thought you could blend in with us? Emma tried to ignore it, but the words hurt deeply. During lunch, sitting alone, she felt a presence beside her. It was Lucas. Hey, he said softly. I heard things are tough around here. Want to talk? Tears welled up in Emma's eyes. Why do you still talk to me, Lucas? Everyone hates me now. Lucas smiled gently. Because I know you, Emma. The real you. The girl who spends hours helping kids at the shelter, not the heiress everyone thinks you are. Lucas's words warmed Emma's heart, strengthening their bond even further. At home, Charles pressed Alice for answers. Alice, we need to use everything we have against the Blackwoods. They are destroying everything we've built. Alice hesitated, the weight of the secret crushing her. Charles, it's not that simple. 
There are things about my past, about Edward. Whatever it is, it can't be worse than losing everything. Charles insisted, his voice raised in frustration. Emma, hearing the argument, walked into the room. What's going on? Why are you shouting? Alice looked at her daughter, then at Charles. In that moment, she made a decision that would surprise everyone. Enough, she said, her voice firm. I can't live with these secrets anymore. I'm going to tell everything. About Edward, about Victoria, about everything. Charles and Emma were stunned. Alice, are you sure? Charles asked, his anger replaced by concern. Alice nodded, determined. It's time for the truth to come out. I'll give a press conference. Tell my story, reveal Victoria's manipulations, expose the lies of the Blackwoods. Mom, this could change everything, Emma said, her voice trembling. I know, dear, Alice replied, hugging her daughter. But it's the right thing to do. No more lies, no more manipulations. It's time to face the truth, no matter the consequences. Charles, realizing the gravity of Alice's decision, nodded slowly. We'll stand by you, Alice. No matter what happens. As the family prepared for the storm to come, Alice felt a mix of fear and relief. The secret she had carried for so many years would finally be revealed. The consequences were unpredictable, but she knew it was the only path to the truth and, perhaps, to redemption. That night, as the city slept unaware of the revelations to come, Alice, Charles, and Emma united, ready to face together whatever fate had in store for them. The breaking point had arrived, and there was no turning back. The conference hall of the Grandview Hotel was packed. Journalists, cameras, and onlookers squeezed in, all eager to hear what Alice Thornton, the newly discovered heiress, had to say. On stage, Alice took a deep breath, her hands trembling slightly as she adjusted the microphone. Flashbacks from the past few days flooded her mind. The heated argument with Charles, the fear in Emma's eyes, the sleepless night going over every detail of her story. Alice knew there was no turning back after this. Good afternoon, everyone, she began, her voice surprisingly steady. I am here today to tell a story. A story of lies, manipulation, and corruption spanning decades. The room fell into absolute silence as Alice unraveled her narrative. She spoke about her past relationship with Edward Blackwood, the hidden pregnancy, the threats from Victoria. But this is just the beginning, Alice continued, her voice growing stronger. Recently, Edward Blackwood offered me $10 million to leave town and keep silent about our past. Audible gasps echoed through the room. Charles, sitting in the front row, visibly pale. Emma, beside him, clutched her grandfather's hand, her eyes wide with shock. Alice went on, revealing the Blackwoods' corrupt practices, tax evasion, exploitation of workers, bribes to public officials. Each revelation struck the audience like a blow, leaving them stunned. I have here, she said, lifting a folder, documents that prove each of these charges. I am handing copies to the proper authorities and the press. At the back of the room, Victoria and Edward Blackwood watched in horror. Victoria stood up abruptly. This is ridiculous, she shouted. These are all lies. You can't believe this, this opportunist. But the evidence was irrefutable. Journalists were already flipping through the documents, their expressions shifting from skepticism to shock as they confirmed Alice's allegations. Charles stood up, walking to the stage. He embraced Alice, tears in his eyes. I'm proud of you, he whispered. Thank you for your bravery. Emma watched everything, a storm of emotions in her chest. Pride for her mother, anger for the years of lies, fear for the uncertain future. Lucas, who had come to support her, held her hand firmly. As Alice answered questions from the press, federal agents discreetly entered the hall, heading towards the Blackwoods. Edward, looking defeated, didn't resist when he was taken for interrogation. Victoria, however, screened threats as she was escorted out. The news spread like wildfire through the city. On the streets, in homes, in offices, everyone talked about the bombshell revelations. Former allies of the Blackwoods scrambled to distance themselves, while those who had been harmed by them clamored for justice. 
At the Hope Shelter, the youth gathered around a small TV, watching the live broadcast. Lucas hugged Emma, who had sought refuge there. It's going to be okay, he murmured. Your mom is incredible. Emma nodded silently, still processing everything. Part of her wanted to hide from the world, another part felt relieved to finally know the whole truth. Back at the hotel, Alice concluded her press conference. I know these revelations will bring pain and confusion to many, she said. But I believe the truth, no matter how hard, is the first step towards healing and justice. As she left the stage, the city was in turmoil. Protests formed in front of the Blackwoods businesses. Customers rushed to withdraw their investments. Employees feared for their jobs. Charles, realizing the magnitude of the earthquake they had triggered, immediately began working on a plan to stabilize the city's economy. We can't let the innocent suffer for the crimes of the Blackwoods, he declared. That night, as the Thornton family gathered at home, exhausted and emotionally drained, Alice looked out the window at the bustling city below. Did we do the right thing? she asked softly. Emma approached, hugging her mother. Yes, Mom. It was time for the truth. Charles joined them, wrapping his arms around both. Now we begin to rebuild, he said. Together. As night fell over a city in tumult, the Thornton family stood united, facing an uncertain future, but finally free from the secrets of the past. The weeks following Alice's press conference were a whirlwind of events. The once serene and prosperous city now buzzed with the chaos of revelations. Edward and Victoria Blackwood were formally charged with a series of crimes, including tax fraud, bribery, and worker exploitation. The courthouse became the center of attention, with journalists camped out day and night to capture every development in the case. In a moment of moral clarity, Edward decided to plead guilty to all charges. I'm tired of living with lies, he told the judge, his voice laden with remorse. Following his confession, he made an unusual request, he wanted to meet with Emma. Emma received the news with a mix of emotions. Anger, curiosity, fear all swirled in her heart. After days of reflection and long discussions with Alice and Lucas, she agreed to see Edward. Their meeting took place in the prison's visiting room. Edward, dressed in the orange uniform, seemed to have aged years in just weeks. Emma, he said, his voice choked, I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, but I want you to know how truly sorry I am for everything. Emma stared at him, feeling a pain she didn't know existed. Why now? she asked. Why after all these years? Edward spoke of Victoria's threats, his fear, and his cowardice. As he spoke, Emma's anger mingled with a touch of compassion. She wasn't ready to forgive him, but perhaps, in time, she could understand. Victoria, on the other hand, refused to accept her new reality. In prison, she yelled at the guards, demanding special treatment. Don't you know who I am? She screamed, her face twisted in fury. But her words fell on deaf ears. The power and status she so valued had vanished like smoke. Meanwhile, Charles faced his own challenges. The public exposure brought intense scrutiny to his businesses. Nervous investors, hesitant partners, and a voracious press kept him constantly on the defensive. We have nothing to hide, Charles repeated in interviews and meetings. We are committed to total transparency. Despite the pressure, he stood firm, determined to prove that his businesses were ethical and solid. Alice, meanwhile, became a polarizing figure in the town. Some saw her as a heroine, brave enough to expose the truth. Others accused her of destroying the local economy and ruining innocent lives. How do you sleep at night knowing you've caused so much chaos? A woman shouted at Alice in a supermarket. Alice responded calmly, I sleep knowing I did what was right, even though it was difficult. The resulting economic crisis hit the city hard. Businesses closed, unemployment soared. The Hope Shelter, already operating on limited resources, saw an alarming increase in demand for its services. We're getting more youths arriving every day, Lucas reported to Emma, concern evident in his voice. And we have fewer resources to help them. Feeling partly responsible for the situation, Emma decided to take action. Together with Lucas, she organized a peaceful protest to draw attention to the plight of the needy youths. 
On the day of the protest, dozens of youths marched through the city streets, holding signs and chanting slogans. We are not to blame. We deserve a future, they shouted. Emma and Lucas led the march, hand in hand. The local media covered the event, finally giving a voice to those most affected by the Blackwoods' corruption. The protest ended in front of the city hall, where Emma delivered a passionate speech. This city is not defined by the mistakes of a few, but by the strength and compassion of many, she declared. Together, we can rebuild and create a better future for everyone. As the crowd applauded, Alice and Charles watched from a distance, proud of Emma's courage and determination. That night, the Thornton family gathered for a quiet dinner. The weight of recent events was palpable, but there was also a sense of renewed purpose. What do we do now? Emma asked, breaking the silence. Charles smiled tiredly but resolutely. We keep fighting. For justice, for change, for a better future. Alice nodded, taking her daughter's and father's hands. And we do it together, as a family. As night fell over the tumultuous city, the Thorntons prepared for the challenges ahead, united by the truth and a desire to make a difference. Six months have passed since the revelations that shook Rosewood. Autumn was arriving, bringing with it a breeze of change and renewal. The trees in the central square, once silent witnesses to scandals and secrets, now seem to whisper stories of hope and new beginnings. Charles Thornton, standing in the auditorium of the former Blackwood Mansion, now transformed into a community center, announced his latest project. Today, I am pleased to launch the Bright Future program, his voice resounded firm and warm. 100 full scholarships for talented youths from our community, regardless of their background or financial condition. The audience, composed of residents, business people, and officials, applauded enthusiastically. Among them, Alice smiled, proud of the father she had only gotten to know late in life, but who was now a pillar of strength and compassion. Meanwhile, in a modest office downtown, Alice and Emma tirelessly worked on their own initiative, the New Beginnings Foundation. Mom, I just got the confirmation, Emma exclaimed, her eyes shining with excitement. Five more families will be helped this month. Alice hugged her daughter, tears of joy in her eyes. Who would have thought our story of pain would transform into hope for so many? The New Beginnings Foundation had become a beacon of hope for families in situations similar to what Alice and Emma had faced. It offered legal, financial, and emotional support, helping people rebuild their lives after adversities. At Hope Shelter, a familiar yet transformed figure worked diligently. Edward Blackwood, serving an alternative sentence, had found an unexpected purpose in helping at-risk youth. Mr. B, a teenager, called out. Can you help me with this equation? Edward smiled, feeling a peace he had never experienced in his years of wealth and power. Of course, let's look at it together. Surprisingly, Victoria Blackwood had also found redemption. After months of therapy in prison, she emerged a changed woman. Now, as a volunteer at the New Beginnings Foundation, she used her experience and connections to help others. Alice, Victoria said one day, her voice laden with genuine emotion, thank you for giving me this chance. I know I don't deserve it, but I promise to do my best to make amends for the harm I caused. Alice nodded, acknowledging the long journey both had traveled. Everyone deserves a second chance, Victoria. That's how we rebuild our community and rebuilding was exactly what Rosewood was doing. The town, once divided by scandals and secrets, now united in a collective effort of renewal. Community projects flourished, small businesses reemerged, and a new sense of solidarity filled the air. Time passed, and finally, the big day arrived, Emma's graduation from law school. The auditorium was packed with familiar faces and new friends. Charles, Alice, Lucas, and even Edward and Victoria, under escort, were present to witness this moment. Emma stepped up to the podium, her face radiant with pride and determination. She looked out at the audience, seeing not just her family, but an entire community that had grown and transformed along with her. When I started this journey, Emma began, her voice clear and confident, I was a confused girl, struggling to find my place in the world. Today, I stand before you not just as a newly graduated lawyer, but as someone who has learned the true meaning of justice, compassion, and community. 
She paused, her eyes meeting her mother's. I learned that the truth, however painful, is the path to healing. That forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting, but choosing a better future. And that each of us has the power to make a difference, no matter where we come from. Emma's words echoed through the auditorium, touching hearts and inspiring minds. Rosewood isn't just a town that overcame a scandal. We are a living testimony that it's possible to rise from the ashes, stronger and more united than ever. As Emma concluded her speech, a wave of applause and emotion swept through the auditorium. Alice and Charles hugged each other, tears in their eyes. Lucas smiled proudly, knowing his friend and now girlfriend was destined for great things. That night, as the town celebrated not just Emma's graduation but the rebirth of Rosewood, a sense of hope hung in the air. The stars shone brighter over the town, as if approving the new path its inhabitants had chosen. Emma, surrounded by her family and friends, looked up at the night sky. She knew her journey was just beginning. With the law as her tool and compassion as her guide, she was ready to continue the fight for a fairer world, one case at a time. And so, Rosewood turned the page on its turbulent past, embracing a bright and promising future. A story of secrets and lies had transformed into a testimony of the power of truth, forgiveness, and a united community. I hope you enjoyed today's story. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our moving stories.